This is Marcus with That Nerd Show, reviewing Don't Breathe. Now, if you follow our show, you know that I am not the biggest horror movie fan. I'm not really the expert with That Nerd Show. But I know what I like and I know what I don't like. And a lot of the newer uh, horror films just aren't that good. It can't beat good classic suspense, a good classic thriller. You know, those Hitchcock movies that hit you on an emotional level. Well, I'm going to tell you right now that out of all the crap I've seen in the last 10, 20 years that doesn't impress me when it comes to horror movies, I found one that did. Don't Breathe was fun. It was exciting. It hit me on a lot of different levels. Um, and the most important thing about this movie was you start you don't know who to sympathize with. As you start to get to the end of the movie... You realize that the kids breaking into this guy's house, yes, they're bad, but you kind of sympathize with them because of why they're doing it. And then, you know, you start to think that really the, you know, the old man, the, the, the veteran is the good guy and this shouldn't happen. And then you start to realize that that may not be the case. And I'm not going to give any spoilers because I think everybody should go see this movie. Even if you don't go and pay $15 on a Friday night, you know, for a movie ticket to see this, it's a great matinee. But for an hour and a half, as it draws you into this dark house, and you realize that because the because the main character is blind, that you know you can't make a sound, you can't breathe, you can't do anything uh, that would you know affect his other senses. And if you do, then it's too late. But, of course, we wouldn't have a horror movie if somebody didn't screw up. And, you know, after the first character dies, and, yeah, that's a little bit of a spoiler, then you start to, you know, then you start kind of rooting for the other ones to get out and hope they don't get discovered. But what really makes this movie fantastic is it isn't just a simple robbery of trying to dodge a blind guy who can still fight and kill you. It's everything about his house, all the different little rooms, even the parts of the movie where he shuts the light out as he's hunting for the robbers. And it, re it reminded me a lot of that uh, at the end, you know, at the end of Silence of the Lambs where it's dark and you see everything through the night vision goggles and she's having to find a light switch and then eventually kills Buffalo Bill. Well, it... You know, my heart was pounding. The audience was into this movie during the screening, too. And, you know, you, you always, when you get really great horror movies, I love when the audience starts trying to direct the characters. You know, they're so emotionally involved that they start yelling at the characters to, to do this, to do that, trying to save their life, even though it's a fictional movie. You know, like, girl, run, don't stand there, grab the gun. And that's what happened. People were having fun with this movie, you know. And then, of course, talking about it and laughing as if, you know, laughing at the characters for all the dumb mistakes they made. But, you know, it's like arguing something in with hindsight after you already know what's going to happen. So you put yourself into this situation with characters where, again, you're dealing with a blind guy. You think it's going to be easy, but then you realize that, it's all of his other senses are your doom. I heard a great analogy to describe um, Stephen uh, Stephen Long and his uh, his you know character, the veteran blind man in Don't Breathe. Imagine Aunt trying to break into the house of Stick from Daredevil on the you know the Netflix uh, Marvel series. And then trying to get out alive as he's hunting you down. <laughs> because that's because that's what it feels like. But then, you know, I mean, you also delve into the history of these characters a little bit. And, you know, what's driving them. Um, you know, you really get into the backstory of, the, of, of Stephen Long's, you know, blind veteran character. And your, your sympathies, as I mentioned before, start to change. But, you know... This movie, it's it's definitely a horror movie that 
I would watch again, even though I've seen it once and that there's, you know, that big twist that may not have the same emotional, you know, the same, same emotion for me seeing it again, kind of like, you know, the end of scream or, you know, the usual suspects because it's so entertaining because it, you know, it hits upon those fears that you didn't think you would, you know, that you would have if you were in this kind of situation that you want to go watch the movie again. Um, that the thriller aspect of it was just absolutely amazing. It, you know, I hand it to the director and the cast because it kept drawing you in more and more as you kind of go, you know, as you go through this maze of a house, you know, as they're trying to escape and he's hunting them down. And then you get to the, you know, the basement and then you get to the hidden room. And that's all I'm going to say without giving you any spoilers. I mean, granted, there's a lot that I can tell you, and sometimes we spoil movies on our podcast, but I won't do it in this review. I think if you are, if you love thrillers, okay, if you love suspense, this is the movie you need to see. I don't know of any other like horror movie coming out around Halloween that's even going to match what Don't Breathe is. It's not gory. You know, it's not this slasher horror. I mean, it is true suspense, you know, to the point of once you think that someone is safe, something else happens. Oh, and then let's throw a mean old dog in there that can, uh, you know, tear your guts out and try to escape from that while you're trying to escape from a blind man who really still can fight. Again, imagine Stick from Daredevil and then you're robbing his house. Overall, I give Don't Breathe uh, a 9 out of 10. It's not perfect. You know, there's a, there, I have a few little hiccups about the movie. Um, but I also understand that when you're trying to draw the suspense, it's probably more or less just nitpicking more than anything else. Um, you know, why didn't a character choose this or that? And, you know, why didn't... You know, they have a backup plan. It's that kind of thing. But again, that's more questioning in hindsight than anything else. And um, while I can, you know, pick apart uh, a lot of different things, overall, it's, it's, it's a pretty damn good movie. So that's why I do give it a 9 out of 10. Not perfect, but right up there, enough that you will, that it's worth going to see in a movie theater. It's worth buying a movie ticket to. And it's something that you will watch again. Um, you know, it's kind of like uh, the green room, which kind of drew you into that suspense and hit upon those fear, uh, those fears. That was another great movie that I was completely surprised by. And for me to see a horror film, um, that's what I want. I, I walk in thinking they're not really going to be good. That's not going to match classic horror films like, you know, the, the original Shining or the omen. Um, I want to be surprised. I want to be proven wrong. And you know, that's what they did with this. I don't think it ever needs a sequel. I think once you've done it, it the movie can stand on itself. You know, kind of like the Saul movies where you know, really the first one was great, but then again, you know, I understand trying to make a sequel when the first one is so successful. But if but I would say this, leave it alone. Don't, don't do a thing. Go on to your next project. Let this movie stand, stand by itself and let it develop a cult following because that's what it's going to get. So not, don't breathe. It's a nine out of 10 and it is nerd approved.